Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I'm an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel, Watch Barbara Knit. Make sure to check in the description below where you will find links to where you can get my patterns to knit up for yourself, how to join the Watch Barbara Knit Facebook group, and how to support me on Patreon. And the description notes will be chock full of links to patterns that you are going to see here today. So. For today, I wanted to talk about what I would say the three most common types of color work that you're going to run into, and I wanted to explain the difference between them. I'm not going to be demonstrating anything. This is more theory <laughs> than trying to show you. And honestly, I only do one. I only design really in one of these three styles. There's only one of these styles that I am uh, qualified to demonstrate. And I already have a video on how your basics on doing mosaic color work. So that'll be linked in the description below. The other two that we're going to be talking about are intarsia and stranded knitting. And I know how to do them. I understand the theory. They are not something I do with any frequency, so I am not uh, qualified to demonstrate these, but it's something I need to work on and maybe someday. I'm going to be showing you some pictures. They're gonna pop up on the screen. I'm not going to be going into them in detail. I just want you to see the examples of what I'm talking about. The first technique I'm going to talk about is intarsia. Here is what is classically thought of as intarsia. It is a method of creating large blocks of colors within other blocks of colors. And when I think of intarsia, the thing that automatically pops into my mind is cute sweaters that have like pictures of bears or apples on it. And that's why I picked out this one image. It is a classic intarsia piece where you have the little sailboat. So that is super cute. Now, the way intarsia works is that every block of color that you have has to have its own little ball of yarn. Let that sink in. So what you have to do is if you're working a, like a field that goes, you have a dark color and then you want like a light color image in the middle, like a ball or something like that. You have to, you start with your dark color and then when you hit the point where you're gonna start the light color, you have to work to your dark color, drop your dark color, then you bring in your light color and just start knitting with the light color. And when you've knit enough of those stitches that you've finished the stitches that need to be that light color, you then drop that color. And then you have to have a different ball of the dark color to finish out that row, okay? Then you take you, you flip it over because most of the time in intarsia you're working flat. You flip it over and then you're gonna work back across that row. You're gonna work over to where your white needs to start, drop your dark color and pick up your light color. And here is where the very, one of the most important things about intarsia. When you switch between one color and another, you have to twist those strands together. Okay, why is this? So you, the first row of the inset color, you knit directly into the stitches. But if you were to simply drop the dark color and start knitting with the light color, there's nothing to join those two colors together. Okay, so essentially it would be attached at the bottom and then if you kept on and you didn't twist, and then at the end you knit across the top of it, it'd be attached at the top, but it wouldn't be attached at the side in any way, which is a problem. 
So what you have to do is when you switch those colors, you have to twist, just do a simple twist, and there are tutorials online on how to do it. I just want you to know that you need to do it because if you're just knitting merrily along, merrily along, you don't know that you need to do it. You don't even know what to look for. So you need to look for tutorials or instructions on how to twist that yarn when you switch the color. So you're gonna drop your dark color, pick up your light color, but twist those knit across or purl across the light colors you're supposed to and then when you switch from the light back to the dark again you're dropping the light and picking up the dark but twisting them together so it locks it in and then you finish with the dark and you just have to go through all the rows in that same way you have the ball of yarn for this side the light color ball of yarn for whatever image you're making and then the dark a second ball of yarn for that dark on the other side. Now, if you have more than two colors, you're going to need more than two balls. Every section of color that's separated from other color has to have its own little ball of yarn. And so they sell things called bobbins that are little holders that you wrap your yarn, you know, you figure out how much yarn you need and you wrap your yarn around there and it dangles off the back of your work. And I've seen people who have bunches and bunches of bobbins hanging off the back of your work and you just have to keep them straight and keep on working on them. I have another image here. This one is super cute and you can see that they've used the intarsia to create the clouds. And each of those clouds has to have its own ball of yarn and when it's going gray cloud, gray cloud, each one of those little like inverted triangles has to have its own ball of yarn. And then, so what we did is we started with the classic intarsia that's like cute little things for kids. And then, but it doesn't always have to be cutesy cutesy. It doesn't, you can do really interesting things up to and including this gorgeous graphic color block uh, piece that I'm showing you here. And so each one of those gray sections has its own ball of yarn. Now, the way that this has been designed is clever because you, since the, you've got the white comes over and then you've got your gray block, it ends at the edge. So you don't need another white ball of yarn on the other side. So you're only going to have that one vertical that you're going to have to do the intarsia on, on each of these color blocks. So intarsia is really great for creating large blocks of color and to create like picture images with multiple colors in it. You just have to be able to manage all of the little balls of yarn. It is most typically an easily knit flat. There are techniques for doing intarsia in the round, but I don't even pretend <laughs> to understand how that is done. Uh, one tip I will give you, blocking intarsia, you cannot stretch intarsia. When you block intarsia, you, you need to block it to get it neat, but you can't like get stretchiness out of it because what happens is the only thing holding that color in is those little twists. And if you block, you'll actually start getting gaps. But if you block aggressively, you're gonna get gaps where those blocks are. So you gotta be careful with that. So. Things you need to know if you're trying to do intarsia for the first time, you need to twist those stitches, twist the threads when you alternate colors and don't over block it. So, okay. <laughs> so the second technique I'm going to talk about is stranded color work. And honestly, I think that this is the most common color work that people think of. When you think of color work, this is what you think of. And this first example is stranded at a very simple and elegant way. It's not terribly complex, but what stranded means, and it's right there in the word, is that every row, well, actually round most of the time, you're knitting, your, however many colors you have in that row, you're carrying all of those strands across the row. So all of those colors are gonna run along the inside of your work. And the essential thing with stranded color work is managing all of those different yarns and the tension 
of them. So you're running them. Some people just do two colors and you have one color in each hand. So you have to do this. Some of them, some people can manage more than one, two colors in a row and have them running over fingers. It just depends on how into stranded knitting you get. But one of the essential things is those strands, the strands of the unused yarn that's running across the back of the work is called a float. And you'll hear people doing stranded color work talking about managing their floats. And what happens is if you have to float a strand, a unused strand of yarn across a bunch of stitches, what you have to do is every three, four, some, however you determine number of stitches, you have to twist. Kind of like an intarsia, you have to lock that. You don't want big giant stretches of yarn going across the back because it just looks sloppy and it can catch on things, especially if it's a garment or something you're gonna put your, like something you're gonna put your hands or your feet into. So what happens is you'll just be knitting along in one color and carrying that other color along and then you just kind of lay it over it so you trap that float between the active yarn and the, f the surface of the fabric. Um, again, this is something, if you didn't know you needed, if you were like, I've never done stranded, you don't know that you need to manage your floats. So again, I recommend searching. There are many wonderful tutorials on how to manage, and everybody has different techniques, how to manage your floats. But managing your floats and managing your tension is super important with stranded knitting. Because if you pull, if those extra strands of yarn are not held at the same tension as everything else, they'll start pulling in and buckling and it'll make everything come in. So this, the, the first one is a very elegant and you can see how you're working in the purple and then it's changing and you're getting chunks of gray and it's just super pretty. Then, so I have this next example, it's a lot more elaborate and they're working the white on a varying colors of blue to give that gradient effect, which is really, really cool and beautiful. And I wanted to show you this one. Um, and this is an example of stranded knitting. And then I want to briefly mention fair isle knitting, which is this last example. Uh, fair isle is a regional traditional, not all stranded knitting is fair isle but all Fair Isle color work is stranded, I believe. And what Fair Isle is, is it's a specific region and it has very specific traditional patterns and usually traditional colors. And there's like very specific guidelines, like this is Fair Isle. And I don't know enough about of it to, to say exactly what it is, but if you, like the first two examples would not, I do not believe be considered Fair Isle, whereas this one would be. Um, now, stranded knitting is almost always worked in the round. In contrast to intarsia, it's easier for it to go. And that's just doing it on the wrong side, carrying those yarns while you're purling is a huge challenge. You can do it, but it's a huge challenge. Because of that, a lot of times, if you want a cardigan or something that's open, they're knit in the round with the stranded knitting and then they're steeped. <laughs> what steeking is, is they plan it so you have your colors and there'll be like a little vertical column where it, that is the spot where you are going to cut it. And you totally, you take your scissors and you cut it to make the opening. And that's a whole nother ball of wax, but it works and has been done for centuries. So that's stranded knitting is when you're knitting multiple colors, two, three, or more, and carrying the yarn in strands along every single row. So it's multiple colors you're running all the time. You can get, as you've seen, gorgeous, gorgeous things, and it is really cool. Now, the third kind is the kind that I do a lot of, which is mosaic style knitting. Now, mosaic style knitting 
is at its base, knitting stripes and slipping stitches. That's it. So what you're doing is you start with one color and you knit with that, you knit, you can do it in the round or you can do it flat. It works both ways, there's no problem. So you knit a stripe to start with in a dark color, say, say color A. And then when you drop that color and you start with a new color, and as you're knitting with that new color, the instructions will be like, knit five, slip one, knit five, slip one, or some other pattern. So what you're simply doing is knitting those stripes, knitting, but then occasionally, instead of knitting a stitch, you slip that stitch. And what I mean by slipping the stitch is you transfer that stitch purl-wise, which means you insert your needle as if to purl, and you transfer that stitch from the left-hand needle to the right-hand needle without knitting it. You just move it over. You haven't knit it. What that does is that means that if you're knitting with a light color and you slip the next stitch and you look on your needle, you're gonna have light color, light color, light color, and then a dark color stitch on your needle because you didn't knit it, okay? So then when you work, that, work the next row, whether it's flat or whether it's in the round, when you, you're again, you're still, you're doing two rows, you're still knitting with the light color, but whenever you see that dark color show up on your needle, you slip it again, okay? Um, if you're on the right side, you slip that with the yarn held behind the stitch. And if you're on the wrong side, you slip it with the yarn held towards you so that it's in front of the stitch you're working, but it's on the wrong side of the work. I'll have a link to that. It'll make it a little more clear. So you've got this stripe. So you've done a dark stripe and then a light stripe, but that light stripe has Dark, dark stitches pulled across it. So then when you finish those two rows, you drop your light color and you pick up your dark color and then you knit with that. And you're gonna be slipping some of the light colors and knitting into the dark colors. So you're creating a pattern by knitting the stripes and slipping the stitches. You've been seeing some images go by that are my patterns. And so it's just, you're not running any yarn along the row like stranded and there's not any extra balls of yarn like in Tarja. Not that you couldn't do that though. <laughs> you can combine in Tarja and uh, mosaic flat fairly easily. All you'd have to do is like work your mosaic over and then have your new in Tarja ball. And then, so you could do that. You can combine stranded with mosaic. You could combine stranded with in Tarja, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with these three different color work techniques. Now, I hope this video, if you'd been wondering about what these words meant and what the difference between the three techniques were, I hope this has helped you a little bit. Um, again, there are links in the description below to all of the patterns that you have seen if you would like to knit them for yourself. I always love it when people comment and if you have questions or just comments, please do so. And I try to read every single one and reply to every single one. If you need more in-depth information or you want to talk about this more, come on over to the Facebook group and do a post and there are plenty of people there who love to talk about knitting too. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.